Well, hello, hello, General Hospital Daily Recap fans. Today's Daily Recap is for Friday, January the 6th, 2023. Friday, December the 6th, 2023. Uh, it was still a little, you know, dealing with, of course, the aftermath of, of Brit, which we all could understand. I mean, it really dealt the majority that really meant anything was over it. She snuck into, um, what's that girl? Esme's room. And Esme, it's funny. Esme right off got the sense that something's up with this doctor, right? Just the way Obrit was looking at her and talking to her. And so she's like, uh, what doctor are you? And then she was talking, I'm a mother who's lost her child. Oh, she, the, and then you took her from, oh, she went on and on. And then she took out the syringe and she told Esme a pound of flesh for a pound of flesh. And Esme was reaching for the call button and Obrit hit it off the bed. And then she shoved that cloth in Esme's mouth and Esme kind of bit her finger. She's like, oh, she goes, oh no, no. She goes, I am going to get justice for my Britta. Because first she says, what do you have to say for yourself? And then Esme's like, help. And that's when she shoved her mouth. She goes, you know what? It didn't matter. Because nothing you could have said, nothing would make it okay. I am going to take care of you for all, everyone, because you've done some horrible things. And my Britta, my doll, she just, and Esme's crying like, no. I almost felt bad for Esme. But see, Esme has done some horrible things for a whole year plus, right? Oh, ouch. Karma. Karma. So then um, as she's injecting, because I was like, okay, cause, oh, no. Esme then hit the tray away to show Lee so she was pregnant. Like, I, I couldn't have done that. <laughs> and she goes, you're pregnant? And I thought, oh, okay. Now that Lisa sees that, she'll understand she could not have been the one to attack Britta. But Lisa doesn't know. She, Liesl, she's not thinking. So then when it goes back to her, she's injecting what was in that thing in Esme's IV. And I was like, oh my God, are you going to kill her? No, right? And then Nina figured it out where she might, where she would be. So she ran in because Sunny said, or somebody told Nina that Esme Prince was in the hospital. Sunny, he came. And he, because Nina had called him, and she had finished taking the stuff out of Britt's office. And so she goes, oh, and Lisa was, Aunt Lisa was supposed to be here. She's not, I don't know where she could be. And Sonny's like, well, you know, Esme Prince is here. And Nina was like, oh my God. So she goes tearing to um, find Esme's room, right? And then Sonny goes out and she it shows her running in or she runs in and she goes, I think so. And that's when Lisa was injecting. She goes, and, and Esme was actually out. And she goes, oh my God, oh my God. And she did. And she's looking at the monitors. They're still going. She goes, she goes, not yet. That's just a sedative to shut her up. So you didn't harm her. You didn't, and the baby's okay. She goes, for now, <laughs> you know? Liesl's like, she does not deserve to have a child. She took my child. I'm going to take her child. Nina's looking at her. She goes, Aunt Liesl, I tried that. Remember? <laughs> she goes, that doesn't work. It won't work. And then she's going to die. And you are going to, she's going to be a martyr because, and then you're going to go to jail for the rest of your life. She goes, can you 100% prove that she is not the hook killer? You can't. Uh, Liesl, I'm not going to let you do this. And Liesl's like, oh, yeah. And how are you going to stop me? And Nina, Nina looks at her. Uh, uh, well, I'm going to go get security. She goes, do it. Do what you want. 
So Nina walks past her to the door. Lisa picks up the pillow off the bed and is headed for Esme's face, right? And Nina looks at her and she goes and they're wrestling over the pillow. <laughs> and Lisa, Nina hits it out of her aunt's hand. She goes, I'm not gonna let you do this. You know, think of James. Think of, oh, she's talking about James and she's talking about, you know, uh, Britta would not want this for you and Maxie and, oh, me, Aunt Liesl. So she talks in, into Liesl, you know, and, and she she's like, you she, are you sure she's okay? She goes, yes, she will wake up just fine. And so Le uh, Nina takes off, I guess, Britta's coat. Because I'm wondering, what do they do with Britta's coat? How are they going to figure out Dr. Westbourne's coat is thrown in the corner, right? With her name bag, badge on it. But she takes Lisa out and, and gets her on the elevator. But Sonny was waiting outside and he sees Nicholas. Because Nicholas is just hovering. Nicholas doesn't have a brain. See, how can a man be so stupid? Elizabeth said, Nicholas, she doesn't know who we are yet. And he goes, no, but I know Esme. I'll know if she's if she's lying, if she's faking. And Nicholas says, and then, I mean, Elizabeth says, and then what, Nicholas? Right now, she has no memory. Even if she does, she's saying she doesn't. Her seeing you would make it worse. And since she has no memories, you might be the one that jogs her memory. Since your face was the last face, she fell over the pair, you know, that when she fell over that parapet. Your face was the last face she saw. So you know what? You keep insisting on getting in this room because she told him earlier, he stuck a couple times he tried to get in the room, right? She says, I'll just go to the police right now and tell them our involvement. And he goes, you wouldn't want to do that. You wouldn't want to be taken. What about your boys? She goes, obviously, you know what? You don't care about my boys. So I might as well get ahead of this. She's saying, because I'm telling you, Nicholas, if you go in there, it's the wrong thing to do. Stay away from Esme. And he just looked at her. And I'm like, he's hardly going to do that. Nicholas is still going to go in there. Still. A hundred percent. I already know. Next episode, we go see Nicholas in that room, right? So he's just standing by the, the nurse's station and Sonny comes up. He goes, Sonny, Sonny, um, I need, I need, uh, what did he go? What did he say? Or did Sonny ask him, you need to be talking to your son. You need to be telling your son about Britt. And he goes, I've been trying to. He goes, he won't let me, he won't pick up any of my calls. And so Sonny finds out, because <laughs> somehow they talk about uh, Esme is there, Esme's pregnant. Oh, she goes, Esme's pregnant. Sonny goes, oh, don't tell me Spencer's going to be a father. And Nicholas goes, no, baby's mine. Sonny looks at uh looks at Nicholas and he immediately grabs him <laughs> and he pushing him, you know, he's getting ready to go throw down. He goes, you sack. I mean, he was just like, oh my God. So then the next thing we see Sonny walking into Kelly's because uh Nicholas was telling Sonny, you need to go tell Spencer before Spencer hears about it somewhere else. And that's before they got into their little altercation. Sonny goes to Kelly. Cameron is there. Uh, Spencer's talking to Cam. Cam is telling him how Jocelyn broke up with him. And he's like, does that guy, did that guy Dex have anything to do with it? And Spencer's like, Jocelyn says we've been, you know, uh, uh, growing apart for months that, you know, whatever. So then that's when Sonny comes in and he goes, Spencer, I need to talk to you. And Cameron's like, okay, you know what? I, I, my break is over anyway. And Sonny's like, no, you need to sit here. You, you probably want to hear this. And Sonny broke the news to Spencer that Britt was dead. And my heart was kind of aching for Spencer because he, at the table, he was starting to break down. But he got up and he kind of, excused himself and he walked to the stairwell and he was hanging on to the banner 
the little banister of the stairwell and kind of the wall and he turned you know, and sat himself down and he kind of eased down on the stair and he was just sitting there and I thought oh my god because he loved he loved him Brit. he even though he and Brit kind of you know went their little had their little separate ways with the Esme situation you know he loved Brit and she loved Spencer so it it did it hit him hard so then Dex comes in and Sonny's talking to the three and he goes, Mr. Quintos, Mr. Quintos, I need to tell you something, Mr. Quintos. And he goes, Dex, look, look, no, I, I'm talking. I got to handle this. Not now, not now, Dex. So he goes back and he's standing against the wall and Cameron is sitting there and he's kind of glancing at him. He goes, you know what? My break is over. I got to get back to work. So Cameron gets up and Dex, I mean, and Spencer's kind of looking at Dex, but he's looking at Sonny and he goes, I can't go back to that to to Spoon Island. I can't. And no, to Windermere, which is Spoon Island, but Windermere. And Sonny says, you don't have to, Spencer. You're gonna come stay with me. And so Spencer's like, okay, okay, Uncle Sonny, you know. So that was okay with Spencer to go stay with Sonny. And they go to the door and Dex is just looking at Cam. And Cam is just looking at Dex. I don't know what both eyes were trying to read each other. I don't know. I don't know what's Dex saying. Yeah, I just had your girl. Mm -hmm, you know it. Or was Cam's eyes saying to Dex, did you have my girl? <laughs> you know, I don't know. Because, you know, the, the whole back and forth, where did that go? I, Cam, I thought at least would have walked up and said something to him. But you know what? Cam doesn't know about Dex. He doesn't know the extent of, of Joss and Dex. So what could he say without looking like a fool? So he's handling that well since he's in the dark. And then we have Willow got some news from the doctor that there's a dome, donor match. She got a match from the dome marrow, bone marrow database. Wow. So let's see where they're going to go with this. Do you think Nina's on the database? Are they going to do it that Nina's the bone marrow match? Well, are they going to do it that way? That would be interesting. I would love it if that happened, right? So Nina got old Brit back to her place and they had the box of Britta's effects and they had some paper documents. Well, one of the hospital records, of course, ended up in the box and it was Willow's file. And it talks about her 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 chemo stuff, right? So Nina is going to find out Willow has cancer. Hmm. Now Nina's going to find out that Willow has cancer before Carly finds out that Willow has cancer. Isn't that just the cat's meow? That is so interesting that they're going to write it that way. Good. Good for them if they write it that way. That's going to be interesting. So that pretty much is it. That's all. Oh, oh, oh Jocelyn. Uh, Dex goes over. He tells Carly that Britt died. Um, Carly tells Jocelyn. And Jocelyn, they, and she ends up telling her mother about, um, you know, what happened that night. That Britt saved her. And Carly was just dumbfounded that, wait, what? You know, pretty much my daughter could have been dead last night. Oh, no, no, you know. So, you know, they, of course, they had their usual daughter. Carly was supporting her, her daughter, which, you know, you would. Jocelyn could have been dead the night before. You, you're going to appreciate the fact that she's alive. But anyway, Carly is like, look, you should have been, you should have told the police you know, what happened so they can get, they can know you were the target. So I think Carly's going to figure out a way to, to bring that out because that's important news. So let's go to comment corner, comment corner. We have Lisa says, um, either Dex still has the bullet. No, it still has a bullet in him or he was only nicked. Yeah. I don't think if he still had a bullet in him, he, he would get an infection. Heather's, uh, has a big, fantasy life going on so does ryan i know i wonder who heather's next target is i know oh my god brando and then uh let's see lisa also says brando was caught by surprise and then they had that stupid rain that just downpour that you couldn't see nothing hardly that's why he got hooked um he was looking for jocelyn and the hook came came out of the corner um, and then uh, Annette says, Brad, 
is my fave and Cam Cameron. And it also says, Brit Mama will take out Esme's mama. Goodbye, Heather. Uh, I'm telling you, oh, Brett is lethal. Annette says, uh, Trina and Cam, nice couple. Nell, worse any day. Oh, she said Nell was worse any day. Okay. So we got one vote for Nell. Um, and then Annette says, uh, notice no special news um, breaks during football games, only soaps, just making me sick. And Dominique says, um, are we to have Heather at, Heather has been the hooker the whole time, or is Heather taking over at some point for the police um, to eliminate Esme as a suspect? I don't know, we'll see, huh? Seems Ryan would be more upset at Heather for hooking Ava, I know. So it seems that Ryan might think Esme or someone else was the hook killer before Heather took over. That could be. That really could be. We still are ruling out that nanny. Um, Ron says the hook killer was left-handed and Heather fits the mold and Joss, uh, until she took her mother, wait, mole and Joss till, still won't tell her mother that Dex and her play couch hockey. No, Joss, Joss isn't saying that. She's telling this whole, she skipped that whole part. She skipped it. And then Cindy says, if Dex and Joss um, doesn't use protection, she might find out a couple of weeks from now that she's pregnant. Yep. Yes, indeed. That could change everything. Natasha says, it's funny. You say Esme was trying to get um, an ax up her sleeve since an ace up her sleeve since Esme calls her baby Ace, right? Spot on that, yep. Nell, Cindy says, Nell or Esme, they were two of a kind. Um, though I don't know if Esme could commit homicide. Yeah, Nell sure could. Nell certainly could, wait, and did, right? Well, didn't they say Esme killed her, her adoptive parents? I don't know, we never revisited that, right? As I seem to recall, she killed... Um, Michael on the road a few years back. Well, she tried to kill Michael. She did. She killed her ex-boyfriend. Um, and then Fred, uh, Chase ended up taking the fall because he compromised. She he compromised the case by sleeping with her. And then Lisa says Nell killed her fiance in Florida uh, before going after Carly in Port, Port Charles. Hello there says my impression of why Britt didn't tell Brad about the Huntington disease, disease was because Miss Wu blackmailed her to leave town. She would not have told the truth in order to gain protection for both uh, herself and Brad. I don't trust Austin, but he seems to be a good listener and I hope it was sincere. Uh, let's see, that's kind of, let me kind of skim through this. Uh, maybe Miss Wu or an accomplice took care of, of Brad and Diane and gave, and able to gain a hold of deception. I don't know about that. Um, plus, Diane was even looking at the guardianship papers when she was attacked, but that was for because Brando was dead. Perhaps a clue is being overlooked. Well, that could be happening. A clue could, could be overlooked. Um, and then... Uh, Susan says, hello there, says, my theory is the hooks are happening through a series of copycats and maybe has nothing to do with Trina at all, or at least if uh, most of the attacks may be the ones by Heather, though. Yeah, I think we, we might have a, a number of, of people that are going to end up being in on this. That, that'll be interesting. And then uh, let's see, Sherry Rob, Sherry says, watching Brad and Maxie made me so sad. It reminded me myself, uh, myself, baby Britta Noel lives on. That is true. And then Cindy says, Liesl goes to extremes when she's deeply upset. Austin told her that Esme uh, was the hook suspect, but Liesl took that to mean that Esme was the hook for sure. I'm beginning to think that Mason was the hook for Ava, Ava and then Heather was a copycat um, as she could get 
in and out of Spring Ridge. Um, Heather just came to Spring Ridge, remember, uh, when they were trying to sneak Anna through the prison van. Before that, Heather was in Darkham all that time, and there was a bunch of hook killings. Heather was getting in and out of Darkham. Yeah, she was getting in and out of there, too. Um, she could probably get in and out yep, of Darkham. She has keys, that jingle. Yep, Heather could get out of everything. And you know what? I think those were the guards' keys, right? Because when she put them down on the table in Ryan's room, they were jiggling. And then uh, Quan says, call Cody. Um, that's a lovely AJ son. Really? Nah, it's not AJ son. Um, let's see. That's a lovely AJ son. And then hello there says, you're talking about Dex. Uh, he's not perfect. But he does have a great head of hair. Hello, <laughs> well, Juan says Jocelyn, uh, just in the hole that you know that is obviously a descent. Uh, just in the hole, maybe a, a descent in a who. And Kwan says gonna let Brad not worth a miserable anymore because I don't make a lot of sense yeah, I don't know what that means um okay let me see yeah then Kwan says yeah I think what's happening Elizabeth's going crazy um no Elizabeth's just fine isn't it funny all of Elizabeth's uh trauma that she had been having for months and months and months seemed to all be gone now that she found out she was responsible for Rako's of falling down the stairs, which she wasn't. Rako tripped and fell herself, you know, but Elizabeth seems to be doing just fine. So that's it for Comic Corner, Comic Corner. Thank you so much for your comments on the daily re recap of General Hospital. We will be back on Monday for another daily recap. You all have a phenomenal weekend.